today Stormworks released a new major update for oil drilling and in this video we're going to be looking through some of the features, some of the new equipment and how to operate and make this thing work. Now it's only my first time going through this as well so bear with me if I don't understand possibly everything but what I can offer is a unique perspective from an engineer's point of view who works in the oil industry. So personally I work as an engineer in the Canadian oil sands and while our oil doesn't get pumped out of the ground like this you just take a bunch of sand mine it put it through a distillation process and that's pretty much it i mean that's very sum summed up it's a very complex process but it's more similar to the coal mining that stormworks has to offer where you have to mine the oil sand so that's the type that i'm used to so drilling liquefied oil is new to me but I do understand the process from an engineer's point of view. So I will do my best to explain and understand and show you guys what this is all about. So we're gonna start first with a quick message by me, 454SS. So this is a truck that I made with uh, the Alta badging. Alta is gonna be my um, industrial faction. So. OMA is for research and exploration, and ALTA is for any type of um, transporting with rail or mining or oil industry stuff. So that's this. I may release this truck. I may make a large rat truck that also can be used for the mining and oil, but that'll come next. So first thing I'll show you is this. This is kind of what is spawned in the desert if you have the industrial um, update. So not with the black thing that I put on top. If we take this off. This is what it looked like. So it's just kind of the start of a platform with a wellhead on the bottom, the yellow thing. And you have a workbench where you could build kind of a static object. You have a water one over here if you don't have the industrial update you can also make your own uh, oil rig there but this is a land-based oil rig now if you bring back this contraption this monstrosity that I made I just did it kind of to quickly understand to quickly understand what we have but I'm gonna paint it white for us to explore what each one does and this tower is uh, hollow right now but it just serves to intend uh, how tall you can make this thing 30 meters in height and 15 by 15 meters in width now if we spawn these new items and make our way up on the platform the first thing is the oil filter or fluid filter sorry now they changed it so now you could only um select i guess you can only select between uh fluid and gas so previously you could select oil diesel water salt water fresh water whatever now it's just these two so i don't know how that's going to look like in ships where you have to only have diesel pumping into an engine and only have water pumping into a ballast tank and if the water mixes with the diesel what will happen so i don't know how that's going to look but there we have it and the only other object that you could select things are these uh, oil rods the oil rig rods but we're gonna get to that in a second let's make our way back up top so we'll start with um, understanding the process so in this type of mining or oil drilling you have two processes so you use this thing which is the same as the yellow one down there the, with the wellhead so that one you use this to kind of drill out and position your rods which are these things so you have to drill interesting i could actually try to pick it up as a person i didn't realize that 
Anyway, <laughs> that's cool. You may be able to lift it with a Magol then. Interesting, if you could just release it like that. But regardless, so it's a two-part process for oil drilling a uh, fluid oil like this. You have to position your wellhead, which is this big thing, and you have to position your rods into it. So they'll attach into the top of this, and that's pretty much what gets pushed into the ground. Now, you push it and push it into the ground until you reach your my your oil deposit which could be like 100 meters into the ground for example only when you've pushed the rod and positioned it using the slurry which is this the slurry is what digs up the ground so as the rod is being released into the ground the slurry kind of chews up the ground makes it into mud you pump it out um that's what gets you into the first phase now once the rod is positioned, that becomes the second phase, which is the pumping, where you use this uh, pump jack to actually extract the crude oil from the oil deposit. So it's a two-part process, and the third part is uh, optional, I guess, but what you, when you have crude oil, you could then use this filtration system to create yourself oil, um, like diesel, jet fuel and I mean in real life you could create asphalt you can create a bunch of different things you do this in this uh, chamber and you heat up the chamber using one of these three so now that we had a quick overview of what we have here let's go through everything in detail the first thing is you uh, have your rods and you want to first of all lift it up in a truck so i said you could use a magol i was kind of impressed because i didn't realize you could take them out but <clears throat> if you're not using a magol you want to use a truck with a uh, crane that has this clamp on it so this clamp can lift up that rod it can also use it also uses a slider to slide it now why that comes into play is in a vertical setting like this you want to slide it down like we said maybe 100 meters into the ground now, each of these come in 10 meter configurations. So you could use this to clamp them together. So here you insert two of those uh, rods and you clamp them so they become one or they act as one. And you could attach, I don't know how the maximum, but presumably you could attach several of them and that would make a long rod that you then insert into your wellhead and extract and push it down into the oil deposit. Uh, so well, let's, we're just going one by one of these things. So here we have two new items, I guess the firebox we had for the coal, but we have an electric furnace and a diesel furnace. Now both of these, just this one's run by electricity, this one's run by diesel, will heat up our crude oil and heat it up enough that it can be used in this distillation process, which we're going to explain in a second. Then we have um, these guys. We have a drill swivel, which pr pumps the fluid in or out. It pumps the slurry. So that's the key here. Because as we're putting this rod into the ground, we have to make sure that there is slurry going through it, which is this, from this filter. So we have to have a fresh water source. So I don't know, maybe a truck has to come deliver some water, or we have a big reservoir on site, delivers water, and then we use our water through this slurry filter to pump into the wellhead, which is this guy, and through this one, this uh, drill swivel. And, sorry guys, it's a bit complicated, but it is in real life. So pretty much you, what you do is you pump your, slur your water through here, slurry in, mixes it th through this thing, lets us burrow this rod into the ground, and this is where you add that fluid. Now this one is a rotary table which allows this thing, the rod, to spin. So it forces it to spin. So we have to apply a, a spin and a um, downward force on the rod. And that's explained right here. So this thing here, wellhead. So once anchored to the train, a drill rod can be inserted into a wellhead to begin drilling a well. In order to drill effectively, a drill rod should be driven by a rotary table and forced downward. So it'll be forced downward with the clamp thing that we showed you and spun using the uh, rotary table. So it has to have both those actions. 
A continuous supply of drilling slurry must be provided through the drill rod via a swivel and the saturated drilling slurry extracted from the wellhead fluid port. So those are two things. If a well successfully breaches, so that's the second stage, if a well successfully breaches the crude, the oil deposit, then we could extract it from the wellhead fluid port. So the wellhead fluid port is this thing, which can be, which can be used in, which it was just explained to be used in two different ways. So we use it to extract the crude oil as well as extract the slurry, it seems. That's what this thing described. So, a continuous supply of drilling slurry must be provided to the drilling rod via a swivel and the saturated drilling slurry extracted from the wellhead fluid port. And then we use that same wellhead fluid port to extract the oil. Okay, so what that shows us now, the reason I colored these two guys orange is because they're, they're combined. So this is the slurry out and this is the fluid. So if we go to this one, so a swivel for transferring fluids to the drill rod. A swivel connects to the end of a drill rod and has fluid ports for drilling, slurry, and crude oil. Pumping a supply of drilling slurry through a drill rod is required for effective drilling. So what I get is that you'll pump the slurry out of this thing. You This is what mixes it with water. You pump it through here and some of it goes out and back into this, I guess, because this has a slur, uh, this has slurry in and slurry out. But regardless, so some of it goes back into this, but then I guess some of it actually makes its way down the drill head and into the ground, where you then pump it out with this thing, which is the pump jack, which we have to have a kind of mechanism on top that pumps it. Imagine a big well head, like imagine a water well where you have to use your hand to pump. In this case, you have to use some kind of mechanic to pump this piston up and down. And out of this slot is where our fluid comes out. So either our slurry at first or our oil after once we've entered into the uh, fluid oil deposit. Um, this is the same thing just laying on the ground. Okay. So then this one, we explained kind of what this one does is this is what actually spins that drill. So this spins it. And if you look at the bottom of this, you see there's kind of like teeth, like chewers up there for uh, drilling into the ground. So this, in this case, this is that yellow thing that's already on site. But if you're using a ship or something, you have to actually have this thing drop to the ground and attach. And once it's attached, it'll tell you it's anchored. Now, this it's, is its own uh, machine. So what I saw is that some people were using ROVs or submarines to lower this thing and position this on the ground. And this, this is actually attached to the seafloor, or in this case, the ground. Whereas everything else, like these things and the rods, can be on a ship above or a platform above. So this, these two aren't attached. The only thing that's attached is the rod goes through this at some point and into the ground, whereas this stays. So I may look into the, in the future into creating a mini sub that has, that releases this thing in the ground, but we'll find out how that works. So that's what this is for. And this is something that you position yourself. Um, so that covers the first two stages. So the first stage was the actual pumping of the slurry, going through the rods, putting it into the ground, drilling down a hundred meters or whatever with a spinning motion here and with a pumping or a pumping fluid through here. Once you've penetrated into the oil reserve, then you could use the pump to pump out oil. And now the last step and last item that we have is this guy, fractional distillation port. So the way this works, it says placed in a distillation column, place the port inside of an enclosed volume to connect to that volume. Outputs different fluids based on height relative to the bottom of the compartment. So say you pump out things out, out of this and you've placed it now, your crude oil is full in here. 
Now this is this. So in high school here, they taught us uh, in chemistry how this works. But in essence, what you get is the crude oil on the left chamber here is heated up with a furnace. And depending on how much you heat it to, it'll change into different forms of um, oil. So you can end up with diesel, you could end up with like airplane jet fuel or gasoline or whatever. I think the game is limited to diesel and jet fuel, but in real life you obviously have all these different byproducts coming from this process. So that's where this this thing comes into play because it'll output different fluids based on the height relative to the bottom so maybe we have to play around with it but of course like you'll have maybe you need a chamber here and then maybe you need a chamber either like down here maybe like that to pump out this fluid or maybe even higher like maybe this isn't high enough maybe it has to be 30 meters in the air and you heat up the crude oil and pump it out into this and then you actually end up with diesel or jet fuel that you could put into your trucks or planes or sell off or whatever so that's the gist of what this um distillation process does and this is the gist of kind of the update as a whole and what you end up with when you get the update so here you have this, in this case you see that it's already attached, it's anchored, but we don't have our um, rod going through it in this case. Now if we fly over to the uh, one that's in the water, so in this case there is no wellhead positioned under the water, you just have a flat seabed, so you'll have to start by deploying that wellhead at the bottom and then you attach your rods and you end up with something that you can lower fairly accurately right into that wellhead and then do the same process. You drill through, which is stage one with the slurry, and then stage two is you pump out the actual oil. So fairly complicated. I'm in the industry and I even don't know all of it, but um, that's my best kind of ex understanding and explanation that I could give now. Obviously, I have a kind of a perspective from an engineer's point of view that does this day in and day out. But also comes the downside of that makes me not want to do as much things for this update just because that's what I do day to day. But regardless, maybe I will. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more.